Next, we're going to hear from Jeanette Anderson. She contracted polio in 1955 at age 16. She had not been immunized. She is obviously a strong proponent of immunization, and this is her story. Good afternoon. Is the mic too close? That's okay. Um, obviously, I'm a very strong proponent of immunization. And I contracted polio in the summer of 55. July the 8th, a beautiful warm day. But I um, had a very bad headache. Nothing unusual, 16, very busy and active. And uh, then the, one morning I woke up and uh, my neck and was so sore and I could hardly bend over. So the doctor came and said, go into the hospital. So I walked into the Royal Columbia at about 1.30 in the afternoon, and by midnight, I was um, completely paralyzed. It moves very quickly. And by morning, I was no longer able to breathe on my own. So I was transferred to VGH, where they put me in a, an iron lung, which I had no idea what that contraption was all about, but it did keep me breathing. Anyway, after about two months, I was moved on to the Pearson Center Respiratory Ward. There were a number of people there with polio. But at the time, they were immunizing children in grades one and two, and at 16, you don't think to go call on your doctor and get a shot. You know. um, in 55, it was actually beginning to slow down a bit, or so it seemed. I didn't know anyone else that had polio or, until I got to the Pearson Center, of course. Um, what can I say? It's been a, a, a long haul. Intense physiotherapy, hydrotherapy, those hot wool packs that uh, I just mentioned. Oh, terrible. Uh, if I smell wool now, I'm right back in IDH. You know, it's just such an association. Anyway, while there, they, they um, kept saying, oh, you'll be out of this, you know, fairly quickly. And they kept talking about this rocking bed, which sounded a bit peculiar. I didn't know what that was. But apparently you can go on that. It's like a teeter-totter. When the head of the bed goes down, you exhale, and when the foot of the bed goes down, you inhale. I think I've got that right. Whatever. Anyway, uh, so they put me on this contraption. They took me out of the iron lung after two months. Well, that was a shock in itself, because in that time, of course, the muscles have all atrophied. And um, anyway, it goes on from there. The intense therapy, the recreational therapy, and on and on. And eventually, um, hmm, how detailed to get. There was a lot of therapy and got very involved with things like art therapy and uh, painting. But you learn to live your life. It's a new kind of life. A drastic change from what you thought your life would be. But there are a lot of good things, too, even with this. But I, it's so hard to believe that there are people that would consider not immunizing their children. Unbelievable in this day and age. I'm not the best public speaker in the world. Um, I'm um, breathing with a ventilator, so... Uh, there are a few odd pauses here. One story of a 12-year-old girl that came into Pearson. Her parents were teachers. And after the scare in California, I think in the late 50s or early 60s, I'm not sure, people were immunized and then got polio. They refused to get their kids down, four children. Anyway, Meg 
and her father both got polio. They were taken to the Prince George Hospital. He had one iron lung. And of course, they put the child in the iron lung so that she could breathe, and her father died. So there was the mother raising four children alone, you know. But they felt so strongly that it would be wrong to immunize, immunize them. But that's pretty well my story.